pet parents or soon to be pet parents this next 30 minutes it's for you because we're talking about Santa paws versus Santa Claus. All right, to help our pet parents navigate the holidays, we're joined by Dr. Kelly Gephardt with Happy Tales Veterinary Clinic. She's going to be answering your questions throughout this next half hour. So what we want you to do is text in those questions, 336-379-5775. All right, let's first talk about this because this has been all over the news. There's this new respiratory thing going on with dogs. Some of the dogs have died due to this respiratory illness. So what do we know about it here in North Carolina? So it's a good question and it is a very hot topic. Um, the first thing to know is that in the veterinary community, we're still trying to figure out what's going on. And I'm not an infectious disease expert, but I'll share the information that I have that the, of what the experts are sharing. Right now, the important thing to understand about um, respiratory disease in dogs is just like in people, there's a baseline level of chronic or, or canine infectious respiratory disease complex. So there's a baseline level, just like we have a baseline level of flu throughout the year and then throughout the year we have little peaks and outbreaks and that's just normal part of the cycle and the same thing happens with dogs um, from the normal infectious pathogens like bacteria and viruses um, what we don't know at this time well what we do know is that these new infections are not uh, identifiable through traditional means like culturing or PCR. So a dog has a respiratory infection, there's testing submitted and the usual suspects are not found, so we don't know what's causing it. Um, there is some possible new information about small bacteria or mycobacterium, possibly. That's very new information. Um, but what we don't know is that it, is it really an uptick in infectious respiratory disease? Is it above a normal baseline uh, uptick? Is it due to the normal kind of players that are causing issues? Is it due to a new pathogen? Um, is it a normal uptick and then more media attention? Um, so there's a lot of unknowns out there that are to be determined. So okay, so when should we take our dog to see the vet? If you feel that your dog is sick, um, if they're having a, a chronic, like a cough, a dry hacking, unproductive cough, if they're lethargic, if you feel like they have a fever, if they're not eating or drinking and they're showing some respiratory symptoms, some of these newer respiratory infections are presenting with some nasal discharge, like runny nose, snotty nose, lethargy, some cough. If you're worried, have them checked out by your veterinarian. You can never be too aggressive. Um, the thing about these new infections is that it may or may not be responding to some of the normal therapies. Um, the data isn't clear yet as to whether or not the associated deaths with the respiratory infections are due to the infection itself or say comorbidities in that particular patient. So there's a lot of data yet that has to be solidified before we can really make a conclusive statement about it. So the most important thing I think to take from it is to be proactive in protecting your pet and making good choices. So at this point, since there's a lot of unknowns, I would avoid doggy socialization. So avoid dog parks, play groups, boarding, grooming if you can. Um, just avoid those doggy socializations. Keep your healthy dog away from sick dogs and vice versa. So if you have a sick dog, don't take it around other dogs. Um, and make sure your pet is up to date on appropriate vaccines. So there's different uh, respiratory vaccines out there, parainfluenza, influenza, bordetella. So those are things you wanna talk to your regular vet about. But at this point, I would say avoid socialization until mm -hmm. we know more about what's going on. Okay. All right, uh, we may have some more questions about that and that is okay. In the meantime, let's go over some like holiday do's and don'ts because there certainly are a lot out of the a lot out of them. I'm sure everyone has their house decorated just like you have your backdrop decorated, which it looks great by the way. What kinds of decorations are bad for our furry friends? Well, fortunately, it, it Plants are the first one that most people think about, like poinsettia and amaryllis, um, hollies, mistletoe. Most of those, I do recommend keeping out of your uh, pet's reach. Like as soon as we're done with this, I'm actually gonna have to get these poinsettias out of the kitchen. Yes, this is my kitchen, but <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to put them on the porch because my cat will chew on them and it, the sap in the poinsettias will cause a lot of oral irritation and vomiting. Unfortunately, most of the plants in the holidays just cause some oral irritation and vomiting. So you wanna make sure to keep them um, away from your pets if possible. Um, some of the big ones we see are tinsel. Like uh, if you have a cat or a dog, I would avoid tinsel, the long stringy stuff, because that can definitely, they eat that and then they can get intestinal foreign bodies. 
be very careful with your tree because um, you want to make sure to secure it tightly uh, or tie it to securely to the wall so that if your cats crawl up it, it won't fall over and potentially cause injury or spill any of the, if it's a live tree, that water can be spilled. And if they drink that up, or even if they drink it out of the tree stand, it can cause, that grows a lot of bacteria, it can cause some pretty intense gastroenteritis, so vomiting and diarrhea. Um, so those are okay. some of the things. That's interesting and, because like you would have thought like, you know, a dog drinks out of a water bowl, what's the big deal if it drank around the tree thing, but it has different kind of bacteria that you don't want your pet to be dealing with. Yeah, and sometimes some fertilizers or additives, so that can definitely cause a lot of intestinal upset. Okay, All right. is there just general holiday advice that you have for pet parents out there? Mm, my biggest one, and we talked about this a little bit at the Thanksgiving one as well, is making sure to keep your food items um, secured, properly stowed away. Um, like if you have a, a counter surfer, make sure that all of your items are not available to for them to get off the counter surfing. Mm -hmm. We see so pets that get up and grab the ham or the chicken and eat the whole turkey and all the bones because they get up on the counter and get it. So you wanna make sure to, um, Prevent your pets from getting the human foods. Make sure to properly secure your trash can with a, a, a lockable lid or stow it in a cabinet if you can, because we see so many pets get foreign bodies and dietary indiscretion, so vomiting and diarrhea from eating inappropriate items um, out of the trash, whether it's kitchen trash or bathroom trash. Um, and also moldy food. We see a lot of moldy food toxicity over the holidays. So the holiday food gets, you know, stays in the fridge too long, gets moldy, we throw it away, then the dogs get, or uh, mostly dogs get into the trash can, and then they get moldy food toxicity. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's an important one as well. All right, we're gonna talk about more topics. We're gonna be taking your questions coming up right after this break.